Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, November 16. The management of Flow Jamaica has agreed to seek an adjournment of its court action against the National Works Agency, NWA, and contractors working on government's road network legacy projects. The decision follows a meeting with Prime Minister Andrew Holness held on Thursday. That meeting included representatives of the NWA, China Harbor Engineering Company, Czech, Attorney General Marlene Malahu Fort, and other government officials. Flo's court action is on claims of disruption of its services to customers as a result of the ongoing works across Kingston and St. Andrew. Prime Minister Holness has instructed Czech to send Flo a schedule indicating a notice period for excavation activities before any such work is done. Going forward, Mr. Holness is also mandating that regular meetings be held with all parties to ensure the major infrastructure development projects continue in a seamless fashion. Government will be assisting with the funeral expenses for the three John Rollins Success Primary School students who were killed in a motor vehicle crash on Tuesday. The crash happened along the Rose Hall Main Road in St. James, claiming the lives of six-year-old Letitia Williams and sisters eight-year-old Tiara and ten-year-old Tiana Thompson. The driver of the vehicle in which they were traveling also died in the crash, while two other students of the school remain hospitalized. Education Minister Senator Royal Reed visited the school on Thursday, announcing that his and the Labor and Social Security Ministries would be partnering to offer support. While addressing the post-Cabinet media briefing earlier this week, Minister Reed expressed condolence on behalf of the government and appealed for discipline on the roads. We, we have precious lives, our own lives and the lives of children and other persons that we are carrying. If we all be very disciplined, we organize ourselves properly so we don't have to be speeding, um, so we manage our time, so we start out early so we can get to our destinations on a timely basis. I think that will help. And we're going to appeal to the police to, 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 to be out there as they have been doing. And again, condolences to the families, to the, 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 um, the student body, and all the friends and relatives of the deceased. Transport Minister Robert Montague says there will be no extension beyond the November 30 deadline to submit applications for road licenses under the Public Transport Liberalization Pilot. Minister Montague made this disclosure on Wednesday at the third in a series of public consultations on the 16-point transportation reform proposal. We have opened up until the 30th of November. And we are saying if you know of persons within your church, whether in your Kiwanis club, whether in your Rotary club, whether in your Citizens Association, who are operating illegally. Now, now is the time to encourage them to apply for their license. To date, the Transport Authority has received approximately 5,000 applications for road licenses. Minister Montague says each applicant must have a certified vehicle, insurance and police record. Government has renovated another public beach to provide locals with access to a quality recreational facility. The licensed beach in eastern St. Thomas was officially reopened yesterday by Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett. The beach was rehabilitated at a cost of over $49 million by the Tourism Enhancement Fund. Licensed beach is the fourth facility to be upgraded as part of government's plan to rehabilitate 10 such public facilities this year. This investment is first for the residents who live here, the people of License and St. Thomas. And then, of course, it will serve all of us, not just in the parish. The beach now comes with a variety of amenities, including five gazebos, a footbridge, sanitary conveniences, parking area, lifeguard stands, guardhouse, and seating areas. Cabinet has awarded two contracts to improve the operations of the Jamaica Fire Brigade. J.R. Wellington Import Export Corporation is to supply and deliver four pumper trucks at a cost of 276.82 million Jamaican dollars. A second contract in the amount of 1.27 million U.S. dollars has been awarded to Bell Safety Limited for the supply of firefighters' protective clothing and self-contained breathing apparatus. And these include the following. 350 firefighters protective clothing in an amount of US $833,037.33 and 99 self-contained breathing apparatus in a sum of US $437,165.78. The information minister made the announcements during this week's post-cabinet media briefing at Jamaica House. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.